Right, so uh, knowledge-based systems, second one in the series on artificial intelligence. Uh, these are also known as expert systems. So um, big questions for this video, what makes an expert system intelligent? Where are expert systems used? And then what are the limitations of them? Uh, so uh, let's see. So basically, if you think about how do you decide what you need to do when you're in some kind of unfamiliar situation and you need to work towards that goal, all right? Well, basically, you get the data from observing the situation around you and then you compare that to knowledge that you already have because you may know something about a situation or similar situations. And by comparing what you can see with what you know, you can make a decision based upon the balance of the evidence that you have, all right? Now, if you imagine you had a broken leg, and that's uh, a broken leg of a, leg of a doll, not uh, a real broken leg, by the way. Okay, who would you trust? Would you trust me or would you trust the doctor? In that case, probably the doctor wins, right? Why does the doctor win? Because they have a large amount of factual knowledge about that particular problem domain that I don't have, right? So uh, the aim of a knowledge-based system is to basically replace a human with a computer that contains all the relevant knowledge from a particular domain. And if the computer is in possession of the fact, the computer can then make decisions about how to solve a problem. So how does the whole kind of thing work? So if we think about that broken leg situation, you've got a medical diagnosis system. Well, the doctor is going to know, nurses, medical professionals will have the key knowledge about a particular, a particular problem to make. A knowledge engineer comes along and they will question and query and interrogate these experts to find out everything that they know about um, situations, the facts they know, the facts they use, and how do they decide what facts to use. And they will try and codify all of that using a knowledge base editor into a database that drives the knowledge base system. That database is going to be made up of facts and then rules which um, control you know, what, what questions are asked in order to evaluate what data. Okay, so two other components there you have an inference engine and you have the user interface. So basically, the user comes along, they ask questions via the user interface, their responses to questions will be um, evaluated by the inference engine, which will use rules to basically evaluate those uh, the data that's been entered. It will compare that with the facts that are in the database and ask further questions based upon those rules via the interface. And at some point, via answering these questions and doing all those comparisons, the uh, inference engine will arrive at some form of conclusion, right? So in terms of applying these knowledge-based systems, you can see that anywhere where you have an expert that is able to use their body of knowledge in order to solve a problem, you could use an expert system or knowledge-based system. So for example, credit checks, where uh, a financial professional will be able to make a decision on whether someone is a high risk or a low risk based upon um, uh, the, the evaluation of this person's uh, financial situation, uh, credit card transaction checking, uh, so if uh, the certain suspicious behavior in comparison to a normal behavior is noticed or certain patterns of uh, behavior are noticed on your credit card, um, the system can raise a flag to say that something suspicious is taking place. Medical diagnosis we've spoken about, analyzing chemicals um, from um, uh, experiments or various other things like that. Uh, drilling advisor, so where you would have taken soil samples, etc., and then analyzed the chemicals within that to then determine whether there's a likelihood of finding gas or oil. This could actually be done perhaps by an expert system, okay? And even HR management. Um, now, if you think about how a knowledge-based system is created and used, you should actually be able to think of limitations of an expert system. So first of all, the knowledge en the engineer needs to actually identify the tricks that are used by an expert in order to quickly arrive at the appropriate solution. Um, if they don't, identify those tricks then actually basically there could be problems um, using that expert system uh, because the system may take a long time to arrive or, or, or at a conclusion or it may take a roundabout route to the conclusion um, and basically that comes out of the knowledge engineer not asking the correct questions because remember the knowledge engineer is not an expert in that domain right so we're kind of relying on them to have the right skill set to interrogate um, uh, the uh, experts, okay? Uh, what if there's some unexpected data that's not being accounted for? Basically, the knowledge-based system can't cope because it doesn't have those facts within its database. It may not be able to evaluate that and uh, arrive at an appropriate conclusion, and that may be important data, okay? 
what happens if the knowledge changes? You have to go through the whole process of interrogating the um, the, the experts and reconfiguring the database, etc., um, and changing the inference engine, updating the inference engine, so that you know knowledge-based systems may not be able to cope in a changing in a changing domain. All right. So you should be able to now see what makes an expert system intelligent. It's basically the in the uh, the facts that are put in there and the rules that are put in there by interrogating the experts. Okay, you should have some examples of what expert systems are used, and you should understand what the limitations of those are. Okay, so the next video is now about machine learning. Uh, right, I'll see you in a couple of minutes. I guess.